welcome back everyone this is Nick and in our previous video we got our sort of rocket flames animation to sync up with the main sort of rocket launch animation so we're gonna add some more particles we're gonna add our planet back and we're gonna make space look a bit more like space uh, so the first thing I want to do is go back to our script here and we're gonna make some changes so I want both of the animations, the one that launches the rocket and the one that turns on the flames or whatever else we want to do for the rocket scene specifically, I want both of those animations to play when I click a button. So I'm going to add a new function here and it'll be a process function. Basically that means it's running every single frame so it can check for things such as us pressing a button. So I'm going to say if input is action just pressed, UI accept. I'm going to move turning on the rocket flame animation into there. And I'm also going to play our main rocket launch animation. So under my main scene, under rocket launch, I want this launch animation. So because this script is already attached to our main scene, I can just access it directly right here. And we'll say rocket launch dot play launch. There we go. Oh, indented block expected. Where is that expected? Why do you need that? Oh, my hardy function is sitting there empty. So I'm going to put a pass in there. Um, and that will close off that ready function and move this back to where it was. Okay. Oh no, <laughs> I deleted my um, selector. So there we go. So now when I play the scene, nothing is going to happen until I press UI accept. So in my case, under project settings, you can set up your inputs. My UI accept is either enter or space or anything else that's in there. So let's play the scene and see if it works. All right, so I got my scene and three, two, one, space, launch. Yay, there we go. And flames should turn on. Looking good. So the rocket is launching into space and it works based on the button press and the camera is following along. Okay, let's come back to our script here and come back to our 2d scene here actually so let's add in our planet which wasn't there before so under main I'm going to instance a child scene our planet and then I'm going to move that planet up into space so what's going to happen is at the end of our rocket launch animation when our rockets in space I want it to seem like the rocket is still moving. So the planet is going to sort of scroll past the screen here. So I want it to be a bit smaller. So I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard and hold shift and scale it down. So it looks like it's a little bit farther away. I'm going to add another animation player here. And we'll call this planet. In Planet 2, we'll add a new animation and just call that Planet. So let's say this takes five seconds. We're going to add a new track for the Planet scene. And we're going to animate the position. So I want to first get it in its start position. We'll just say right here. And then I want to keyframe its start position. And then this is not going to loop because it's only going to happen once. So I'm going to set it to the end of the animation and keyframe its new position. There we go. So we move back through that animation. Should sort of scroll past and it kind of gives the illusion that the rocket is still moving through space, even though it's stationary within this color rect. Um, so let's take a look and see how that syncs up with our main rocket launch animation. And in order to do that, we want to make sure that this planet animation that we just created only starts after the main rocket launch animation is complete. So to do that, we're going to come back to our script descript here, and we're going to use a function that the animation player has called Q. So we can access this animation player directly here. 
we're going to say planet2, which is this animation player, dot Q planet. So Q just automatically plays the animation after the previous whatever animation was there is finished. So let's save that and see if that actually works. And then, uh oh, our planet's there. What do we do? Let's go fix that. So I can use Q, but I need to use Q in the same animation player. So I'm going to actually get rid of this animation player. And in our rocket launch animation, I'm going to create a new animation and we'll call that one planet. And we want that to take about five seconds and we'll do the same thing. So we'll go to planet. Okay. Animate its position and keyframe our end position there. Let's actually make sure that that's out of view of the rocket. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we should be able to use Q now for this because it's in that same animation player. So if we go to script and instead of planet two, which doesn't exist anymore, we'll use rocket launch dot Q. Okay. So this should work. So after the launch is finished, we should see planet plane. So let's check that out. So it should be in space. And then when the flames turn off, our planet should scroll past. There we go. So it kind of looks like our rocket is still moving. Cool. All right. So at this point, all of the basics are in there. We got our main scene in the background. We have our rocket launching up into space. We have our planet moving around in space. So now I'm just going to add some details and I'm not really going to go into too much detail about how I add those details because it's kind of optional. But just to make things look kind of cool, I'm going to add some stars scrolling in the background and some additional uh, animations to our, our rocket. And I'll come back once those are finished. All right, I'm back and I've added my details. <laughs> Basically some additional animations, some more particles, and some other things you can play around with when you actually download uh, all the files associated with this tutorial. But I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how I did everything but let me give you the basic breakdown. So first off in our main scene, I added some more particles that looks like smoke, kind of like the pre-launch uh, steam or whatever else is coming out of the rocket. Um, up in space, I've added my stars so that when the rocket actually enters space, the stars will sort of parallax scroll a little bit behind the rocket. And over here in my stars animation player, you can see where I've actually set that animation up. So the planet is already moving, but in our rocket scene, I've also added a sort of hyperdrive effect using some of the same particles as before in my sort of hyperdrive particles 2D node. And basically what's gonna happen is as soon as an additional animation plays, namely the uh, rocket body animation, which detaches the body from the capsule, the hyperdrive particles will turn on and the, the capsule will shoot off into space. <laughs> um, so basically these animations were set up in the same way as some of the other animations, just animating particles, animating position and uh, rotation of different sprites. But uh, let's take a look at the stars. So in the beginning, when the rocket is first in space, you can see the stars slowly scroll, as I just showed. But as soon as that hyperdrive turns on and the body falls away, we get some fast stars. So it looks like the capsule is blasting into hyperdrive. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at what the full scene looks like right now. All right, here we go. So we got everything set up. Three, two, one, launch. We got our particles. We got our flames turning on. We can see our stars, looks pretty good. As soon as the rocket is in space, we got our planet coming by. As soon as that finishes, the body drops away. And as soon as that finishes, the hyperdrive turns on. There we go, so it looks pretty good. Um, let's take a look at some of the last little scripting that I added in order to get all this timing correct. It's starting to get a little bit complicated here, but let me break down the different sections. So at first we did timing the rocket launch into space. 
along with turning on the flames. As soon as that finishes, it plays my sort of star slow parallax. It plays the planet moving past the rocket. As soon as that's finished, it plays the rocket body detaching from the capsule. And as soon as that's finished, the hyperdrive turns on, the sort of slow stars become invisible, and the fast stars become visible. So you can take a look at how each of these things works when you download the files if you're interested in doing that. Otherwise, all I'm using here is some yield functions, which allows me to wait for the completion of an animation before the next animation starts, and some more queue uh, sort of methods here, which plays an animation after a previous one is finished. I'm also using some really basic uh, switching the sort of parameters in the inspector via scripting here in turning on and off the stars and the hyperdrive. All right, hopefully you've been able to follow along thus far. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.